In a society that spends most of its time hunched over technology or sitting in chairs, Bridge Pose is the antidote to all of your back pain woes. This pose truly feels so rejuvenating on your spine while also helping you build full strength in the lower body, open up the chest, open up the heart, and just relieve any spinal tension that you may be holding on to. I'm Logan Haley and welcome back to the Yoga Nomads. Today we're talking everything bridge pose, also known as Situ Bandha Sarvangasana. Excuse my Sanskrit. So I am practicing today on my lovely Court Collective yoga mat and using this hugger mugger block is going to be my secret weapon to getting proper alignment in bridge pose, ensuring that I don't overarch my back and also creating a restorative, relaxing version for anyone who has back pain or who isn't quite ready for a big back bend. Okay, so let's get right into it. Doing bridge pose is surprisingly simple, but there's a lot of mistakes that you can make if you aren't paying attention to building that solid foundation. So like any back bend, it is absolutely crucial that you have core engagement and leg engagement. And that is gonna, what is going to protect your spine from getting hurt. Clearly the biggest benefit of bridge pose is helping you relieve back pain. So we don't wanna create more pain by doing improper alignment. So you're gonna start out laying on your mat with your knees bent up and your feet flat on the floor. You can scoot your feet back about to where your heels touch your fingertips and then just step a little bit forward from there. So somewhere in this range is great. Next, you're just gonna rotate your pelvis. So my trick for this is you can see when I naturally lay down that you're gonna have a natural arch because of the curve of your spine, that's great. So if I put my hand underneath my low back and then I rotate my pelvis up like this, imagining my pubic bone going up, I am going to squeeze my hand down and then when I remove the hand, my lower back is actually flat to the floor. That pelvic rotation is key to bridge pose. So once you've done that, press into the floor actively with your feet and with your hands spread wide. Engage the glutes. Don't clench the butt, but engage the glutes, engage the core, and start to press your hips towards the ceiling. Okay, very key here, you don't want to suddenly burst up into this back bend. No, this is a slow, strong motion. My glutes are engaged, my quads are engaged, my calves and my feet are active, and I'm pressing into the floor with my shoulders and my elbows and hands. Once you're here, check your chin, okay? You don't want your head arched like this. You want your chin slightly tucked and looking directly up above you, okay? I can already feel you know, a little bit of shaking in my legs. They're sore from working out. So if you feel that activation, that's a good sign. My core is engaged and now I can move to the next step of bridge pose, which involves shoulder rotation. So I'm gonna lift through my shoulders and kind of roll my shoulder blades back and under me. All this time keeping this part of my body engaged, the lower body is active, and I can roll my shoulders together kiss those shoulder blades and clasp my hands together on the mat. This is the point where you can move into a deeper back bend, but that back bend isn't really sourced from the low back. It's kind of starting with a chest opening. So my chest is opening, my heart is opening, my chin is reaching up, and now I can push a little more into the floor to slowly deepen into the bridge pose. Imagine your ribs expanding, your belly button is sucking in towards your spine, and you're maintaining a nice elongation, ensuring that your neck is flat to the floor. You can hold bridge pose for up to five or even 10 breaths, depending what's comfortable for you. And when you're ready to come down, you unclasp those hands, bring your palms back to the floor, and slowly lower down one vertebrae at a time. Again, this slow movement is crucial to not hurting your back. So I'm slowly bringing 
my back back down. My pelvis is still tilted, so my lower back is gonna end up flat on the floor, my tailbone flat to the floor. And now I can relax or move into a nice wind relieving pose by pulling my knees towards my chest and alternating the grip on my hands if I want, rocking back and forth. Restoring that spine after its first back bend of the day. So bridge pose really can be practiced at any time in your yoga flow, but it's definitely nicer to have your spine warmed up, especially before you advance into standing on um, your shoulder, into clenching your shoulder blades together and trying to move upward. Now, if you have back pain or the idea of a back bend just terrifies you, that is totally fine. That is why bridge pose is so beginner friendly, okay? So I'm grabbing my hugger mugger cork block. I really love this one. It's eco-friendly and it's like so sturdy and grippy. It's really nice. And what I wanna do is ensure that I have proper alignment in the pose. So one of the easiest ways to do that and to prevent the kinking in the low back that I was talking about is to bring your block long ways and place it between your thighs, okay? And my thighs are gonna squeeze that block together. I want you to try this with me because you'll notice that it kind of stops you from overarching that low spine, which again is one of the biggest sources of injury in back bends. So now I'm squeezing that. I have to keep my legs active. Obviously I'm gonna drop the block. So you have to stay active. You have your feet and knees hip width apart and you did your hand trick, squeeze your hand down, rotate the pelvis and lower that lumbar spine onto the mat and you're ready to go in a bridge pose again. So slightly tuck that chin. I have a bun in my hair so it's a little bit in the way but I just want to make sure that my neck is flat to the floor and now I can engage my glutes and my quads. I'm squeezing my inner thighs and I'm pressing into the floor with my hands. Going slow. And once I'm here, you'll realize as you hold this block, it's preventing me from like over clenching my glutes and over arching that low back. It's kind of keeping me in this nice place where I can imagine my shoulders, my hips, my knees are almost a straight line. And you can engage the core and hold here and feel that nice strengthening in your inner thighs. That is the secret sauce to building more resilience in the lower body, okay? My glutes are engaged, but my butt is not clenched. My lower spine is arching, but it's not forced and kinked, okay? Everything is gentle, and I'm a nice, sturdy bridge that, you know, all the cars and buses could pass over, okay? Going over a bridge that's super sharp isn't ideal, even though there are yoga backbends that, you know, can get you there. But this is great beginner, friendly way to start. If you don't want to roll up on your shoulders, you can just stay here and actively press the hands and to the floor and hold a little bit longer. <sighs> Exhale and lower one vertebrae at a time. And then release that block. Okay, so Another way to do bridge pose is the restorative version. And this is less active, it's not quite as intense on the legs, and it's just one of those things that like opens you up after a long day of having poor posture. We all could use better posture because our society is so sedentary and we're just always looking down at our phones and on our computers and it's just not natural for our spine. We want to be standing tall and opening back up, counteracting. If you spend hours like this, I mean, you really need to spend hours like this opening back up. And when you lay down in this restorative version of bridge pose, it's a great way to do that. So this time I'm going to bring the block about level with my lower back, but I'm not gonna lay back on it yet. I'm gonna bring it in place once I'm already in the pose. So I can lay down, I check that my feet and my knees and my hips are all lined up again. Alignment is key. If you wanted to do the previous trick with the block here and the block under you, go wild. You can use as many blocks as you want. Okay, so I've slightly tucked my chin, my neck is relaxed and I'm looking upwards. Now I can engage my glutes, engage my core, my pelvis is tilted, my pubic bone is leading the lift. Imagine a string on your pubic bone leading like this, okay? 
And now I'm just getting a little bit up, not too far, just enough that my block can go under my sacrum, which is kind of that vertebrae right where your back ends and your butt begins, okay? That's your sacrum. And it's kind of that flat part on your lower back before your booty. So I'm gonna put the block right there and I can just settle down and relax into it. I'm not engaged in the legs anymore. And holding here is just perfect. If you wanna try this with me, please feel free to. And you can also experiment with even laying into this very restorative um, bridge pose that's almost a Shavasana in a way. And that just targets a different part of your back. You may even wanna try a wind relieving pose with the block underneath you. Oh my God, it feels so good. This is the pose for people with back pain. In fact, I injured my lower back a little bit when I pulled a muscle doing deadlifts. Long story, wouldn't recommend it. But this is the pose that brought me back to life. You could hang out here for an hour, I swear, and you would feel so good. You're just relaxing. You can roll those shoulders back, kiss the shoulder blades, and feel a little more opening in the heart. Notice how that changes the angle of the pose. Again, I'm not kinking my neck though, I'm keeping my neck straight, but I'm just rolling the shoulder blades down and even turning the palms up because I don't need that active pressing in the restorative version, okay? And my sacrum is just settled onto that block. So nice and lovely. When you're done in this posture, re-engage the legs, re-engage the core, slightly lift from the pu uh, pubic bone, and just pull the block out, settle back down one vertebrae at a time, and boom, you have figured out the secret sauce to relieving low back pain. So, bridge pose, as you can see, has a lot of different variations. Very, very accessible to kids and elderly and anyone, but it's not recommended for people with neck, with extreme neck injuries, extreme back injuries, or any problems with their knees. Uh, again, because it's a back bend, that can be a little intense. So you also want to notice the invigorating feeling of slightly bringing your heart above your head. That's part of the reason why bridge pose is, is one of those dual poses where it relieves stress and it calms you down, but it also gives you a little bit of energy. So that's really nice. You're getting a back bend, you're getting heart, heart opening, and you're getting a little change in blood flow just to kind of wake you up. I love doing bridge pose at lunchtime. It's just like the, great, uh, the greatest little pick me up in the middle of the day. So to show you a more advanced version of bridge pose for the ultra flexible folks out there, I am going to lay back down. Do this with me one more time and you can hold wherever feels good for you. Practice that tilt so you naturally want to lay down like this and we're going to grab our hips and we're going to tilt down or you can use the hand trick. Boom, pelvis rotation. Press into the floor with your feet and with your hands spread. Engage the core and glutes and lift hips to the sky. Paying attention where most of my movement you see is up here. This is where the back bending really begins. So my shoulders start kissing, my, my chin is tucked, and my butt is not clinching and kinking that low back. So I'm here and I'm fairly flexible so I could push up a little further, okay? Not crunching, but lengthening and, ar and arching in a way that feels good for my spine. If you ever feel pain, you better back out immediately or I'm telling your mama. You back out if you feel pain because this is not supposed to be painful. So I feel good right about here. And this is where I could come up on my tippy toes. I could walk my tippy toes closer and deepen like this. Or I could straighten my legs out, keeping the glutes engaged. Nice, lifting with the ribs and the chest. Or I can walk my feet closer and make my bridge a little more bendy. A few other variations, shifting your balance into your left leg, reaching up with that foot. I'm fully engaged in every part of my body. I'm shaking, okay? This is strengthening, all right? My shoulders are pressing into the mat, switching to the other side, pressing into that right foot. Bending the left and reaching. 
Glutes engaged, hips lifting. And always on the lower down, remove that clasp underneath you. Re-anchor your back, press into the floor and slowly one vertebrae at a time. Lower the spine back, flat, pelvis is tucked, low back is settled. Okay, so I, I have taken you through this full range from restorative to beginner to intermediate to advanced. Okay, bridge pose has so many options for you. So use the block to your advantage and don't push yourself too far into this back bend because there is no win in hurting your spine, okay? It's my biggest warning here. Now, a few mistakes that you should always avoid when you're doing this posture. One is those feet should be perfectly in front of your knees and your hips. These are all aligned. My toes are pointing forward, okay? It really puts your spine in a weird position if your toes are splayed out. You never want to do that. So before, when you're doing this setup, I want you to always check. You should be able to look up and you should not see your, your toes. You should never see your toes. They should be hidden because they're facing forward. Again, another common mistake is with the neck. My neck should not feel tense. It should feel relaxed. And that slight chin tuck is going to give me the elongation up here. Again, if you have a bun or a hair tie, it might affect it a little bit, but ultimately you don't want your neck like that because that is just really not gonna feel good. So one more common mistake is the over clenching of the glutes. So because my spine is flexible, I'm gonna show you what this looks like. It hurts. So if I am right here, I'm in a healthy, nice, strong bridge, I'm moderately engaged and everything. If I like suck my butt in and squeeze, look at how that affected my lower spine. This is normal. This is over clenched. Okay. I don't want to crunch there. I want to stay elongated in my arch. All right. So just keep the glutes engaged, but don't like squeeze a penny between your butt cheeks, okay? <laughs> you wanna stay in a nice moderate place, all right? And if you can avoid those three mistakes, the toes, the chin, and the booty, you are going to be golden in bridge pose. It is just gonna feel so dang good for you. Finally, I wanna to move to, if you felt comfortable enough with a block like this, I would also recommend trying the block this way. So again, I lined it up with my low back. You can lay back down, do your setup, tilt the hips. Are you getting sick of hearing it? This is really gonna nail in your head now. Do that light lift, fully engaged. I'm pressing with my other palm and you have to go a little higher and then you can put that long ways block under the sacrum on the flat part of the low back. Oh my gosh, it feels so good. And now I can just like let loose and this, is a lovely, lovely restorative bridge. Sometimes I, again, will play around with a little lifting, a little wind relieving, rolling back and forth, and then coming back into alignment and just bridging, just bridging, baby. It's relaxing. So re-engage, repress into the mat, remove your block and slowly lower down. I hope your spine is now thoroughly stretched out and feeling so good. Thank you so much for joining me again on the Yoga Nomads and be sure to go over to our website for more ultimate guides on every pose, every chakra, every type of yoga gear you could possibly need. We have got you covered. Namaste.